What's up everybody, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, back again for another Prestige, uh, Pike Prestige 2PK video. I started working on the center panel, have it on the bench here. Um, this is a really long center panel. Um, just to give you a little bit of idea of how long it is, I'm going to compare it to a, a Vertigo center panel. So I have the Vertigo sitting on top of the Pike. And you can see how much uh, longer the the pike the pike center panel is. They're both the same wingspan, uh, about 3.9 or 4 meters. Uh, you can see that the the pike's wingtips are going to be much shorter than the vertigo's. So we have a very long center panel, which means we have really really big flaps or long flaps, I should say. And the other thing I noticed is that the Pike Prestige has a very thin uh, airfoil. Um, seems to be considerably thinner than um, some other models I've seen and that kind of makes the flap servo installation a bit tricky because uh, you can't really get a long arm in here. Uh, one of the other features of this airplane, again we have the um, molded servo bays so this is a completely boxed in composite uh, servo bay. There's a pre-installed, or I think it's glued in already, a uh, wing connector. And the um, flat servo bays are really close to the uh, fuselage. They're really close to the center line of the airplane. So um, we're bringing mass closer to the center of gravity, which should make the plane um, you know, handle better, be more responsive. So... I had to use a really uh, short servo arm. This is four and a half millimeters from the center of rotation to this hole, and this barely clears the uh, top of the uh, bay here. You know, generally when I build a model, a lot of times I've built you know the same airplane before two, three, four, five times, but obviously this is my first time with this Prestige. So I'm kind of figuring things out as I go, and I've started, as you can see here, the horn installation. Um, I think it's going to come out pretty good, but if I had to do it over again, I think I would have done it differently. Um, real quick before we get onto that, I've done basically everything the same as we did on the ailerons here. So I measured this distance, drew my line, transferred it around the top of the wing cut the slot in for the um, control horn. So really it's the same exact procedure um, as the aileron. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about how I did this. But I did try to do the flap horns a little differently. I tried to keep them, um, you know, sort of uh, flush mounted here because I think... Um, since the wing is so thin and we have to use a, um, a really small control horn, we could probably get away with using a, a smaller horn here too. Uh, because we're not going to get, we're not going to get a whole lot of range of motion or travel with such a short um, control horn. So having a shorter hor uh, horn on the flap might help us get a lot of down throw on our flaps. Um, if we had a bigger arm on the surface uh, sticking out, um, we might not get um, as much throw as we needed. Unless we used a much longer arm on the servo and used a servo cover that had a bump or a blister on it. But regardless, um, I've, I've started this one side like this, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Hopefully it'll be easier since I've already done it once. Um, I'm using uh, flap horns from a Vertigo. So again, my kit didn't come with anything, and I elected not to use the uh, servo ROM and IDS frames that uh, come that came with my kit. But I'm not I'm not using them, but uh, yeah. So it's a little tricky. Um, you know, you could get you can get this plane with the servo ROM and stuff already installed and the servo in there ready to go, and obviously that will make you know assembling the model a breeze. Um, so, uh, you can also get it with the servo ramen frame supplied, but not installed, and you're going to have to go in here and make all the cuts for everything yourself. So, those are some options. I'm doing it this way just to see, you know, how it is without that LDS or IDS stuff. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to basically just uh, transfer what I've done here over to this side and then um, we'll move on from there. Well, I got both uh, flaps ready for the horn installation. I've sanded both the horns, filed some notches in them, I've made sure the rods fit through the holes nicely, had to uh, run a 1.5 millimeter drill bit by hand through both of them just to make them fit a little better. Um, there are the slots where we're going to glue the horns in right there. So we have each side done up. On the um, channels that I've filed through the wing here, uh, for this thing will focus, uh, this little bit is to allow me to flex the wire to be able to actually get into the control horn. Otherwise there is no way of um, hooking the L bend to the horn uh, without making a huge hole here. And then on this side, I just took a little bit of the foam out so the head of the control horn can uh, fit in here with full up deflection. And then this is just a little notch to get the uh, other side of the L bend some clearance here. So um, just this is all clearance related stuff. This, this bit here is just to allow me to flex the rod. And then we have the slots uh, going to the uh, servo bay. So I'm just going to mix up some epoxy. I'm going to fill uh, both these channels on both sides uh, with as much thickened epoxy as I can. And then uh, I'm going to put the horns in with the rods. And then we'll let this cure overnight. And then uh, after that's cured, we can install the flap servos. Well, I have my epoxy mixed up here. And I'm getting ready to glue the horns in. One thing I've done is I've put some mold release wax in the area where the horn would recess into the um, center part of the panel here when we're at the full up deflection on the flap. Um, I think I'm going to glue these in with these stuck up just so I can compress the horn um, all the way into the flap. And I don't want any epoxy that might seep out to um, stick the two parts together. I've also rubbed some uh, wax into the uh, hinge line. So I'm just gonna, going to um, fill up these uh, slots with epoxy and then um, hook up the linkages to the horns and, and uh, push everything into place. All right, well, we have our horns uh, glued in. And as you can see, I've taped up the flap so that they're in the full up deflection. And by the way, this thing gets tons of uh, up deflection in the flaps unlike some other models that I've put together. And we'll just let this cure overnight. Um, that's what the linkage looks like on the bottom side. And I'm just gonna make sure that these are pushed all the way back so that the horns are fully seated. And yeah, we'll let this cure overnight and then it should be just a very simple matter of uh, gluing the uh, flap servos in. Well, the uh, horns are installed and the epoxy is dry and actually came out better than I thought. Did a little bit of cleanup work and dug out all the uh, wax I had stuffed in there. But you can see that we get all the up travel and uh, the surfaces move freely. Now, rethinking this um, with the way I had my horns in here. Again, this is the first time I've built one of these, so I don't really have like a standard system like the other models I build. But looking at the horns and how uh, tall they are and how thin the wing is, you know, I think probably using the uh, the IDS systems that Samba recommends might be the uh, better option here because um, you know the horn is going to be really small here. And you can use a small arm here. Um, if you were to put a uh, bigger horn, like exposed on the top, like I did the ailerons, um, and then used a servo arm and tried to keep it, um, you know, flush or under the surface, that you might not, uh, you probably wouldn't get enough travel, right? You probably wouldn't get enough uh, down travel. So you really need to use a small uh, arm here and then a small horn or I think the IDS would be the, the right way to go. Um, I did 
hook the servo up to a tester with this 4.5 millimeter arm just to see um, what my travels were like and I just held the servo in by hand and uh, you know cycled it with the tester and I was getting plenty of down and plenty of up even with this uh, tiny tiny servo arm so yeah I think if you get one of these prestiges you might you might want to opt for the uh, IDS on the flaps but anyway um, you know all we have to do now is um, glue the servos in and uh, we'll, we'll move ahead with that if you're wondering what kind of servos I'm using I, I can't tell you these were sent to me to um, evaluate um, their prototypes and um, you know they might be good they might not be good but we'll see uh, I can't tell you the vendor or manufacturer or anything like that but they look interesting all right servos are ready to be installed and I have some epoxy mixed up here and I've scuffed up um, the servo bays and what I'm gonna do is just you know put some epoxy down here push the servos into the L bends and I'm going to bond them in in the full flap down position. So I'll be using some masking tape to deflect the flaps up and uh, or down I should say. And the tape will hold these in place while the servos cure. And I'm going to try to line everything up so the flaps are you know equal throws on both sides. And that I get uh, as much down deflection as I need. So let's go ahead and do that. So the servos are in place. Got plenty of epoxy there holding them down. I'm going to do my usual uh, ballast slug method, putting some weights on and letting this cure. I'm going to make sure they're uh, aligned properly with the linkage and the hinges. And then we'll let that cure uh, for at least 12 hours or so. And then we can move on to um, finishing up the center panel. I got a little bit of work to do on the wiring here because um, the wire that's out at the ends... Um, isn't quite what I want to do. I need to put a different setup on it. So we're gonna do that. Uh, put servo covers on these guys, <clears throat> and that'll basically wrap up the center panel. So uh, let's uh, set these servos up with weight and let it cure. Right. Well, our servos are now installed and the resin is cured. And um, I have my servo tester here, and we'll see what kind of throw we get. So I'm going to go full down. That's full down throw right there. And you can see it's not 90 degrees. But these flaps are so big that I think it's going to be plenty. And then on the upside of the, the up throw, we get the max that we can get. And we're about... Maybe 5% from the stop. So we're using 100% of throw this way and about 95% throw that way to reach the limits. So pretty happy with that installation. Um, so now I just gotta hook up these wires and then put a servo cover on here. And the servo cover I was gonna use is not big enough, so I don't even know if I have something this wide. These bays are pretty wide. So I'll dig around and see what I can come up with. So hopefully we'll get these uh, totally stowed away and the covers on. And then the other thing I got to do is down here on the ends, there's the wrong end of the wires hanging out here. This is, uh, you know, the, the, the connector that would be on the servo. And I need the other side, the, um, well, it's technically a male, but most people consider it a female on here. So I need to change this connector. But my problem is I have zero you know, length to play with, and it looks like it's already been cut and soldered once. Again, this is pre-production, so I can't blame Samba too much for this. But I'm going to have to do something with this. Hopefully I can get something accomplished. It's like this on both sides, so I definitely have to change those out. Well, I couldn't really find any suitable servo covers. These openings are pretty big, so I just have this uh, sheet of about the... Uh, I think it's about a millimeter thick uh, Lexan. And I'm just going to cut it up. I already scored the corners here to uh, make servo covers, so we'll move on with this. So I managed to get some uh, plastic servo covers cut, and I've uh, bonded them in place. I just used my usual uh, canopy glue. 
Um, so I put some glue around the edges and then just taped it down. And this stuff's really good because um, if you just pry an X-Acto knife blade underneath one corner, it'll pop right off. And you can also um, wash away um, the glue with, uh, with with just using water. So it's it's really not permanent solution. It allows you to get the covers off pretty easily. I barely managed to get a uh, new connector on here. Uh, I clipped off the wires or I clipped off the uh, old connector and was able to barely crimp on a new connector here uh, at the end of the center panel. So I'm happy about that. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I've scuffed up this connector a little bit, as you can see, all the way around. And basically I'm gonna push it into this hole and uh, glue it in. So on the center panel, um, the connector will be flush mounted and glued in, and then the wingtip will be loose. So it'll be a little bit easier to plug in. And the way I'm gonna do that is, uh, I made up these little like jigs, I guess, a long time ago. I've been using them for years. Just a little piece of plywood and then a little pigtail here with the other end of the connector. And this is all waxed up. It's got a ton of uh, mold release wax on it, on the wood and the connector. And then I've actually waxed up around this hole uh, on this surface. Um, put a little bit of wax around the hole and ensured that I didn't get any in the hole. And this jig is going to get me a nice uh, flush mounting system and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So basically if I install this little jig onto this the connector and the wing, um, this plate is kind of sandwiched in between them. And I'm just going to put a little bit of epoxy on the plate, like right where the, this connector meets the plate, all the way around. And then I'm just going to push it in until it's flush like this. And I'll just use some masking tape to um, strap this in place and then let it dry fully. And then since it's all waxed up, I'll just be able to yank this out. And then with just very minimal cleanup work, um, we'll have a very nice uh, installation here on the plug. So let me go ahead and do that. So here's basically how it looks um, once it's you know in place. Um, you can see a little bit of epoxy oozing out of the corners or the edges. And that'll come right off because I applied the mold release wax to the, to the wing first. And um, I put some tape down first, sort of protect some surfaces and just use some masking tape to strap it in place. So I have this going on at uh, both ends here. And, you know, after this, all I have left to do is basically just put some packing tape on the ends here to protect the the uh, surfaces from the tape that we use to um, install and remove the wing tips. And that'll pretty much complete the wing. Um, one thing that I might have to do, these are the joiners. Uh, they're... I like them because they're uh, uh, big dimensions. They're wide, you know. They're 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 big. They're not narrow joiners. So they'll probably be uh, really um, really strong. Uh, filled with foam, very light, super light. Um, but we're gonna see how these fit because uh, you know when you have a very light F5J model, you don't want to really be gripping really hard on your on your panels when you're trying to install or remove the joiners when you're, when you're putting the wings together. So if you have tight-fitting joiners, uh, you might end up with a bunch of dents and stuff on your parts because you're grabbing them so hard trying to get the wings in and, in or out. So um, we'll see how these fit. If they fit real good, then we'll leave them alone. If not, we're going to um, do a little bit of work on these to get a somewhat loose fit into the wings. I'm not looking for a snug fit. I want just barely on the loose side. Um, that way we don't have to um, put a lot of force into things when we assemble or take, take apart the model. Well, I did some test fitting on the joiner into uh, the tip, and it fits pretty snug, and I have to put quite a bit of force to get it in. It does go in, but it's, it's pretty snug. So I'm going to try to take some uh, material off this and get it to fit a little looser, and I'm going to do that with, uh, I have just a piece of 600 grit sandpaper here. I'm going to keep it flat against the workbench and put some water on this to wet sand and just hold this flat and, you know, just sand back and forth on all sides 
um, and try to loosen up the fit a little bit. I'm going to test fit this as I go. I don't want to sand off too much. Um, so I'll do that for both joiners and make sure I get the fit that I like. And after that, I'm going to polish them up a little bit with some rubbing compound just to get them to be a little more slippery when they go inside the parts. But yeah, um, I'm going to hold this flat against the workbench. Make sure you have a flat work surface. And you don't really want to use a really coarse sandpaper. If you had a really super tight fit, like they wouldn't go in at all, I would recommend starting with 300 or 400 grit sandpaper. And once they start fitting, um, switch to 600 grit sandpaper. Don't use anything coarse like 100 grit or, or 200 grit or even lower than that, like a 60 grit because you could really degrade the uh, strength of the carbon if you uh, take off too much material. Well, I'm basically finished up with the 600 grit sandpaper. And this is sort of how they ended up looking. Um, I've also marked the joiners, so RC, right center, right tip, so I know which way they go in, because typically joiners uh, fit better certain ways, left center, left tip and when I got these from Samba they did they were marked um, right and left and had arrows but they were marked on the sides so the sanding uh, you know got rid of the markings so I just uh, put these on the tips where the sanding won't mess them up now I have some 800 grit sandpaper here and I'm just gonna go over these again lightly with 800 and then I'm gonna polish them up a little bit so we have the 600 done and the 800 done and then I'm just gonna um, hit these with a little bit of polishing compound uh, I'm not going to spend too much time polishing these up, maybe just a few minutes on each one, and then we'll do a final fit and see how they work. Okay, I'm all finished with the um, with the wing joiners. Uh, just did a little bit of polishing with the rubbing compound. Um, obviously, they're not super shiny or anything. Um, <clears throat> I just spent like two or three minutes on each one, um, and I have a pretty good fit. Uh, this is kind of the fit I was uh, looking for. Um, they're easy to get in and out with very little pressure, almost no pressure. Um, I'm trying to do this one-handed, so it's a little difficult. But um, you can see, pulls out very easy and goes in very easy. And um, yeah, that's all you really need. Um, again, if these are really tight, you're going to be you know, gripping on your wings and your center panels uh, with a lot of pressure trying to get these joiners out and you could end up uh, denting or damaging your parts on, you know, especially on these uh, super light F5J models. So that's it for the uh, joiners and we're just about done with the uh, wings. Um, all I gotta do is wait for that glue to dry on those uh, connectors on the center panel and do a little bit of cleanup on those and then just uh, just a few little odds and ends and we can move on to the fuselage. Okay, the epoxy is dry on our um, a little uh, wiring uh, joint thing that we made here. Um, so now I have to remove the, um, the jig. And this should come off pretty easy. I'm trying to do this one-handed so it's a little difficult. Oops, there it goes, and that's kind of how it, <clears throat> let's see if I get the center panel set up a little better, that's kind of how it ends up looking. Uh, you see we have a bunch of epoxy that oozed out everywhere, and that's really not a big deal because we have the mold release on the surface here, so we can just literally just use our finger to scrape all this stuff off, like this. So yeah, that just, just comes off super easy. Like that. And so, what you can also do is just get an X-Acto knife and just sort of gently go underneath this and just lift all this stuff off. And then just scrape around the edges with your finger and that's about all you need to do. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So that's basically how it looks when it's all cleaned up. Um, 
And then I have an extension here, a servo extension, and it plugs in uh, really easily, just like that. So, <clears throat> nice clean installation, flush with the end of the wing. And um, that basically wraps up the center panel. I'm just going to put some packing tape over the ends, and then we're going to call it good. Okay, I've put some packing tape on the ends of the center panel, um, top and bottom, just to protect the surfaces. And then I finished up the servo covers. Um, actually found that um, my servo horns, even being just 4.5 millimeters long, were barely scraping the bottom of the covers. So I cut a little hole, and just to give it some relief, let's see if you can see, see that there. And then I just put a piece of packing tape over it. Um, it's still flush, but uh, I just needed like an extra half millimeter, and you know the servo cover is about a millimeter thick, maybe, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but yeah, so I ended up having to cut little holes there. But other than that, uh, the center panel is done. Um, that concludes all the construction on all the wing parts. So we have a completed center panel, and we also have completed um, wing tips. So now we can move on to probably one of the more interesting parts of the Prestige 2, which is the fuselage and tails. It has a pretty interesting fuselage setup with, with, in the way that the uh, servos mount, and it has a very unique elevator as well. I hope you guys found this video uh, interesting and helpful. Um, certainly many of the things I went over in this video are applicable to many other models, uh, especially uh, solid core you know, F5J models. So yeah, hopefully you found something useful in this video and we will see you in the next one.